In this video, we're going to look at how to create an awesome free custom branded intro based on an intro clip that you already have in your Camtasia 9 library. You'll learn from my five step quick process how to get the job done real fast. Let's dive in. Hey, it's Gord here. Welcome. If it's your first time here and it's your passion to make great videos, become a ninja at video editing and learn more tips on how to succeed with video and marketing on YouTube, then make sure you hit the subscribe button and click the bell notification icon so that you don't miss a thing. Here we are in the Camtasia 9 library. And as you can see, there's many motion graphic intro clips that are listed here that you can use as free assets to modify for your own purposes. Today, we're going to look at this line wipe asset. And as you can see, let's watch it run and see the nice motion graphics and the colors in it and the spinning. It's pretty cool. What we're going to do in the tutorial today is to transform that into my own custom branded asset in just five easy steps. So look here, I've got a nice spinning initial logo in here and a spinning logo there and the speed's different. We do a lot of interesting little enhancements here and that's what you're gonna learn today in just a five step process. So the first start of the process, I like to call assess the asset. So what we do is we bring the asset down to the timeline and then we need to ungroup it so that we can see what it's made of and uh, look at the constituent parts, which we're going to do right now. And there's a whole number of things here. We see there's various shapes, different colors, uh, red and blue. We see a lens shadow and then some call outs and text. So we can see there's a number of components here. And if we just uh, scrub through, you can see there's the red shape, then the squares come in, and then the circles. You know, all the while looking down here, there's animations everywhere, and you know, as we go through. So, you know, in order to not be overwhelmed in looking at all of this, the approach I like to take is to turn off all the tracks and then turn them on one at a time and just get a feel for what it is I'm gonna be trying to change. Okay, so now that we have all the tracks off, you can see if I just scrub through here, the first piece is just our red rectangle background. We're going to turn on track two, and in here we see the introduction of our first shape. So if you click on here, we can see that it is also a rectangle, a blue one, and there's an animation on it. And in its uh, end keyframe, it's uh, out as a full square like that and at the beginning it's just a very tiny little spot as you can see a very tiny square if we zoom in okay so let's move our play work area back out now if we add in the next layer we see that now we have a red square and similarly when it gets to full expansion it, it has a slightly different shape now let's bring in the next layer and in the next layer we see that there's a circle here in addition, so the red square comes out, it overshadows the blue, and then we get into a, a white circle, and then we can see the animation keyframe points. So as we can see, this whole first section is a few squares and some circles. Okay, so we can see how this sort of unfolds. It's really just a uh, blue rectangle that gradually goes out to fill out the square. And then we continue on, the lens, the next three layers, are our text and callouts pop-up behavior and then here there's pulsating you know there's a few effects in here that make up how the text gets executed step two in the process is to change the color scheme to match your branding so to help us with that i have two little files here that i created one that shows the color code coding of the branding that i'm going to apply and here's the uh an image of what the color coding looks like in the example in the library. So as you can see, the blue background here in my picture is going to map to this this grayish black, which is a color code of 293036. And the red in the background here in this callout is going to map into a blue here, which is my color code 347FC3. And lastly, we don't need to do anything for the white because the text is the text. So the first step, I'm going to delete these, and, and just that was just for to show you. And now we're going to deal with the the color changes. The order of things is to first work with um, converting the actual existing blue colors to the gray black. So now we go to here. I am on track two. If you want to eliminate some noise, you can turn the tracks off around while you're working on it. So this one, I need to change to the gray black. 
And in order to do this, we need to turn on the visual property here that you see that uh, affects the animation. So when we click on this to turn it on, you notice it says in this mode, changes you make to a single animation will be applied to all animations on the selected media. So we want to say yes here. You need to do that because wherever you're using a shape and you have these animations, there's always a beginning and an end keyframe, and you need the coloring to be applied throughout the, the whole effect of the shape and the animation. So that's why we need this turned on. So again, we're doing the first one here. We're going to go back to the call out. As we can see, it's in that blue range, and we want to change it to our gray black, and our color code for that was 293. 036 so 293036 bang and now if we look see that's already done now I'm going to turn off the next shape in the sequence let's go there that's that's a red one we're not going to do the red stuff uh, first I'm just focused on the blue so I'll go I will go through the whole um, solution now just working on on the blue stuff next is the red and the red needs to now become our new blue. So we come on here, going into the red, come down, and the color code we were using there for our blue was 347FC3. There's our new blue. Let's find our next red. Okay, so that was pretty quick, so now we've gone through and done the core color changes. The next step in the process, uh, step number three, is to do any of the text modifications or additions. So as you can see here, this has all got the TechSmith branding, and we're going to change it to the Gord Eisman branding and my tagline. In the first place, we're going to change my tagline up here. In step four of the process, we add in any new design elements and modify any existing ones. For the first modification, I want to bring in my logo icon, which is this asset here. I've already brought it onto the timeline and trimmed it so that I can fit it in here, which is where I want it to go because in this area is where the spinning of the logo is going to occur. Now, because I don't want all the other noise going on, I'm going to actually just sort of like lock and hide the few tracks around that you know may cause us a little aggravation when we're trying to adjust things. The first thing I need to do is resize the logo. So I need to go get a custom animation, bring that in, and I want my animation to end where the animation ends with the spinning. So those are aligned nicely. And since we know this is the end position, we're in a good shape there. And now we need to get to shrink the uh, icon right down to be tiny. There we go. That's good enough for now. And now we can see that the circle will grow. As the circles grow, so does the logo. So the only other element we needed to put in now was the actual spin in the cycle. So we'll zoom out a bit. We'll go to the end keyframe and to do this, we need to adjust the z-axis spin. As you can see, where it shows how the arrow goes here for spin. And we need to use minus 360 degrees. And now watch what that does for our logo. So see here? So we go from, from small, and as we grow out to be large, we spin. That's it. It was pretty easy to do. For the next mod, we also want to bring the logo icon in, and we want to have it spin. And uh, as you can see here, we have um, our call out at the top there that's blue that has the white text, Learn, Apply, Transform. We want to put the little logo right at the beginning there. So we're going to position it to come up right at the same time. There, the logo comes up. So we're going to slide in our logo. So as we can see now that the logo comes on in the right location in context with the rest of what's going to be animated, now we just have to add in the spin cycles for the logo. Bef before I do that, I wanted to add in um, a few fades. There, 
the fade in works nice okay as soon as the fade in is complete we wanted to put in the animation to do a 12 frame spin and do 360 degrees on the y-axis so we're gonna make sure that this is about 12 frames because that's how long I want it to go fairly quick the first spin so the end is going to be y-axis 360 degrees so you can see that that'll be a spin and then I'm gonna put one more animation on top of that and this one I want it to be 24 frames which is a little less and to that point we want to see it at 720 so you're going to see that does a double spin from here so one two and it's there we go so let's just see how that plays out that's good Okay, and the last thing I wanted to do was to trim down the overall length because you'll see that right now the intro, based by default, it's, an, it's exactly 9 seconds and I want it to be about 6, 5 to 6 seconds. But I wanted to end it just after the dot .com got created. So there, there's no more movement. So let's bring all of these which go to the end currently bring them back and end at about the six second mark and now we have our finished product beautiful now check out the finished version where I've added in some sound elements to uh, spruce it up I'm probably going to create another video to show you how I designed the sound solution as well. And remember, if you're intending to reuse the asset, remember to add it into the library. If you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to check out the other video I have where I also created another custom branded asset. It was a lower thirds based on a library asset. You can click on the card above or on the link in the description below. Wow! It's limitless as to what you can do to modify existing library assets to come up with your own creations. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, be sure to hit the subscribe icon on this page so that you can get more videos like this in the future. And thanks so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.